Herzlich willkommen. A cordial welcome to the self-representative forum. Before we get started, I'm going to say something in English, just in case we have guests who don't speak German. To the forum, if you happen to be a guest, um, welcome. We will have our session in German, but there will be English translation on channel number three. Okay. To everybody else, uh, we will now switch to German and Austrian Sign Language. If anybody is in the need for Austrian Sign Language, the interpreters are in the front. And everybody else, we will now speak German. Also. So, a cordial welcome once again. I just said that for those of you who don't speak German, they can listen to the English interpretation on channel number three. And if uh, any of you need Austrian sign language, we have our sign language interpreters. They're interpreting for our colleagues who speak Austrian sign language. Those of you who have a pink piece of paper in front of you, please hold it up. You're all self-representatives coming from different organizations and you have the right to speak today. So if you're a guest, well, we may be giving you a chance if there is time enough toward the end, but uh, we give priority to the self-representatives. Can we get started? It's exciting, isn't it? I don't know how you feel. But before we start, when you take the floor later on, not at the beginning, but later on, before you want to say something, please raise your arm and then a signal will be given to you and then you have to press the red button and then you can speak. And when you have finished speaking, you have to press the button again and the microphone will go off. I know almost all of you and I will be using first names. I, Iris also said yesterday that she would prefer first name basis. Is it okay if we all use first names? We only have one microphone, so as soon as uh, uh, colleagues uh, uh, want to say something, we will give the sign language interpreters uh, a microphone so that they can speak and translate what's being expressed in sign language. So, let's get started. Hello, I'm Iris Kopera. This is my colleague, Petra Plitschka. She's a sociologist, a coach and a moderator. And she also um, prepares summaries of events by making drawings. I'm Petra Plitschka. This is my colleague, Iris Kopra. She's an artist, she works for Balance, and she represents the interests of people with cognitive disabilities in the Self-Representation Center. The two of us will be moderating this event. Now, a word about the time schedule. It's between five to two and twenty past two, there will be a presentation. Participation and stages of participation, voting and participating. 1420 to 1435, we're going to have a discussion. How can we participate? 1435 to 1505. Examples. Expert groups, 
from the um, Fonds Sociales Wien will take the floor between uh, 1505 and 1520. And then a discussion, what do we need in order to be able to participate? At 20 past three, we have to leave this room. That's the end of our event. So the PowerPoint presentation refuses to open. It's probably due to my drawings, and it happens time and again. Well, we are a couple of minutes behind schedule, but uh, we know we need more time today. So is the PowerPoint presentation ready now? So just give me a minute. A question to the group. Where do you come from? I know there is someone from Lebenshilfe. Lebenshilfe Austria. You come from Salzburg and Lower Austria. Jugend am Werk. How many people from Jugend am Werk? The expert group from FSW, from Caritas, and someone from Atempo, and OHTB Participation Cafe. So is the PowerPoint working now? So I'll do something else in between until the PowerPoint works. We have very special guests. In the invitation, I apologized in advance for all mishaps. Now, this is one of the mishaps that can occur. The PowerPoint is not working. I'm very sorry about that. But we're going to convert uh, the file into PDF format and perhaps it's going to work then. And then we have very special guests. You have come to us from Germany. Would you like to briefly introduce yourself? You come from Pixel. Now who is going to tell us where you come from? Don't forget to switch on the microphone. Hello, everybody. We come from Pixel from Germany. We've come here just for this event by plane, and we then took a taxi to come here. And now we're participating in this event. We live in Dusseldorf. We have opened up a Pixel lab. We're working with computers. And it's a place for people to meet, both or without disabilities. Great. Anything else you'd like to tell us? Christoph. Hello, I'm Christoph Wicher. And I've been with Pixel since 2010. I used to talk to politicians in Berlin to raise money. In 2011, we 
open pixel and uh, we were working there first on a voluntary basis and since December 2017 I've been working on the scaling up team which means that we want to open additional pixel sites in Germany and perhaps also in Austria so if you like you can approach us afterwards we've brought our business cards Applause is welcome. At the conference, I found out that people don't want applaud often enough, although applause is good to wake you up again. Well, the young men, the, the engineers are trying hard to, to get uh, the PowerPoint running. We produced a presentation with drawings and in easy language. We are here for the first time at the Zero Project Conference. This is an international conference that brings together people from all over the world uh, working for people with disabilities. Uh, there are many self-representatives here, but few people with uh, cognitive uh, disabilities because it's not easy uh, if you've had trouble at school and if your English is not good, it's difficult to go to, to attend an international conference. But Wilfried Kainz and many others helped us organize uh, this event today. Who of you has attended such a conference? conference before. So we have a couple of professionals here who have been to conferences in the past, but for many of you it's the first time. Who is uh, at such a conference for the first time? Well, is it uh, bad for you that everybody is talking English? Yes, very bad, very unpleasant. But I, as I told the others, I don't know how many countries are represented here. 83 countries. Now imagine if you had to have a translation into 83 languages, that would be impossible. We have someone uh, translating into English in the booth and we have our sign language interpreters. So at least three languages are represented. Now, how is the technology doing? Is it broken completely and can't be fixed? So, I'm afraid we will have to come up with another solution. Is it okay? For all of you, I hope. Well, nothing has happened so far. Our event is called Self-Representative Forum and it's about voting, uh, taking part in elections. Who of you has uh, gone uh, to the polls already? Who of you has voted uh, in Austria or in Germany in parliamentary elections? You did. I think you also uh, told me that you had gone uh, to the polls and cast a vote once. I come uh, to the uh, sign language interpreter. Yes, I've gone to the polls. I've voted several times. We're fortunate in Austria. And as I have heard, there are, um, there's a new law in Germany. In Austria, uh, it has been possible for people with cognitive disabilities to vote. It's new in Germany, but in Austria it has existed. This law has existed for quite some time. But voting is one thing, but how do I know who to vote for? Uh, we have a colleague from Capito who is going to tell us about a solution. Perhaps you have something in Germany as well, information in easy language. When you get to this topic, you can tell us about it. How do you know who to vote for? Do you know a politician? Lucy, who do you know? Any politician you know? 
Voting is not so easy. There are different parties. They all pretend to do something for people with cognitive uh, disabilities, but then nothing happens. Even if you have a chance to meet politicians, they will tell you, yes, we're going to do everything that needs to be done. But when you look around in Austria, there are still barriers that have not been eliminated. Oh, yes, we could discuss that at great length. But do you know any politician? Mr. van der Bellen. What's the name of the German president? Well, in our case, we have a woman, um, the federal chancellor, Angela Merkel, in Austria. Uh, Mr. van der Bellen is the president. I have a question to Germany. Have you ever talked to Mrs. Merkel? No, unfortunately not. I would like to invite her. Uh, do you know what I should do to reach her? Well, that's a cooperative project. We're going to send Mr. Kurz back to Germany and he's, and uh, we exchange chancellors. We get Miss Merkel and they get Mr. Kurz. Now, I just got the message uh, from our technicians that it might work now. Let's try again. Yes, it's working. Iris, your turn again. Now, this is what it's all about. Self-representatives uh, want to vote for people to represent their interests. Participation. It's a different word. What else? Uh, participating, uh, having a say, being involved, being allowed to take part, all that means participation. Now when we're talking here today, we say uh, we want to participate, we want to have a right of uh, participation. So it's a difficult term, participation. This is what we're going to talk about. Participation is difficult language, so we decided to use another word, um, which means exactly participation. Taking part. Iris, would you like to read this out? In the UN Convention on the Rights of uh, uh, People with... Uh, disabilities, we find a statement on participation. So in the UN con uh, Convention, we find a statement on participation. Participation in political and public life. Article 29 says, the rights and the possibilities to claim one's rights as other people to... Well, again, it's difficult language. Now, we put it differently in easy language. We say people with disabilities must have the same rights and opportunities to participate in political life. And for the documentation later, there will be drawings, uh, which can't be shown here because of our computer mishap, but I hope you can follow us. Does that mean that all people can take part in everything, everywhere? What's your answer? No, this is not the case. No, but... 
When it comes to decisions that concern my life, I have the right to be heard to say something. Those who are in positions of responsibility have to make sure that it works. For example, politicians, uh, uh, workshop bosses, people who organize public events, like the conference here. And now we're going to talk about the different stages of participation. Let me show you that. Those of you who got the email earlier may have seen this before. There are different stages of participation. That is a fundamental explanation. Whenever it's about participation, whenever um, people are to be involved, there are certain stages you have to go through. And we've adjusted those stages uh, uh, in order to make them understandable for people with disabilities. Uh, what does adapt mean? Now, we have rewritten the text so that it can be used with people with cognitive uh, um, disabilities. Iris will always correct me when I use a difficult word. Well, the layer at the bottoms means being there. The second stage means being informed. And once you have been informed, you can express your opinion and you can talk. And once you're allowed to talk, you can take part in the decisions and Ultimately, you have to take a decision yourself uh, because very often, no matter what you say, there is someone else who's got the trump card. Someone has got the jolly joker, the trump card, and says, I'm sorry, but it's nice that you've been thinking about that, but now I decide and what I say uh, will be done. Now, how can we get uh, to um, a situation in which we too have a joker, a trump card? Now, I'm going to explain the stages slowly, one after the other. All people must have a chance to be there. That means the door has to be open. And no one should be able to tell you, this is not for you, or sorry, you're in a wheelchair, we don't have an elevator. Um, being there, joining, means being allowed to get in. Yesterday I heard from another country, it wasn't Hungary, but it was a country in Eastern Europe. Someone said I wanted to apply for a, um, an ID card for your children and the local authorities said, well, you don't need an ID card for your children because they can't go anywhere anyway. And this must not happen. The Zero Project Conference is a good example because for years the conference has made every effort to make sure that everybody can take part. I know um, speaking English is an obstacle, but that was a compromise. Now, what is a compromise? When two people together try to find a solution, um, one person is not really uh, happy about the solution, but they agree on something that is acceptable for both. That is a compromise, I think. Yes. Is that understandable? Do you know now what a compromise is? At the Zero Project Conference, for example, the doors are open for everyone, but we only have a certain number of places, so not everybody can join. So we agreed on the compromise to speak English, but you can bring supporters, 
Uh, you can bring along sign language interpreters uh, and uh, the supporters don't need to pay for uh, being at the conference. Andy, what would you like to add? Well, you always need to know where to get the support. You have to be well informed and know where you can find support. Again, this doesn't apply to everyone. Next stage is I need to get information. I must have access to information in order to know what this is all about. Where do I find information? On the internet, but also on the cell phone, on television. Very few people watch television these days. Monica, what do you want to say? You have to use a microphone because otherwise people can't hear you. Through discussions with other people, of course, you get information simply by talking to others and at an event like this, people get talking. Do you read the newspapers? You get information via the social media more than through a newspaper. Are you on Facebook? Who of you is on Facebook or any other of the social media? We're all friends, I know. We can all be friends. I would be happy to get more friends on Facebook. So via the social media, you get a lot of information. But it's important to understand the information and we'll get to that in a minute. In easy language, at work, of course you get information at work. Those of you who go to work have an advantage because they get information. Having information is important. The next step, once you've got the information and once you've understood the information, you must have a chance to express yourself. I must be able to express my opinion without being afraid it must be possible for me to express my opinion. When a survey is performed, when a vote is taken, during discussion rounds, uh, um, meetings in my district, uh, my village, uh, my town, my state. Now, when I have a chance to participate uh, at uh, local level, um, I can also take political decisions and this takes us to the question of elections. Now, what kinds of elections are there? Municipal elections. What is, how would you explain the term municipal election? A municipal election is like voting for the uh, city government in Düsseldorf. And what is the Landtag? Well, that's the government of the land in Germany. The politicians, for example, from North Rhine-Westphalia get together and they discuss certain topics. For example, they discuss the elections to the European parliaments or what can we do for environmental protection, uh, um, coal-fired power plants are a big issue in Germany. Now, colleagues from Austria, do you know what a, a provincial government is, a provincial parliament? 
in Salzburg, for example. In each province in Austria, there are politicians. I myself was invited to the provincial parliament of Salzburg. I know many politicians and this is always about the province of Salzburg. Not about Lower Austria or Upper Austria, but about Salzburg. So in our case, it's the provinces in Germany. It's uh, the regions like North Rhine-Westphalia. So I've been to the provincial parliament in Graz. So elections to the parliament of the province. But there are also elections to the local government in Vienna, for example. Who of you comes from Vienna? So those of you who come from Vienna... can vote in Vienna for those who will then decide on who is going to be the mayor. Um, voting and elections is a difficult topic. We may be doing something in the course of the year because we don't have enough time today. Now, who of you lives in a country of the European Union? Who lives in a country of the European Union, including our guests? Now, take a look around. Almost all of you, including our technicians, they also live uh, in the European Union. And all of us on the 26th of May are allowed to vote. It's not obligatory. I heard yesterday that in Australia going to the vote is uh, obligatory. It's not so in Austria. It's not obligatory in Austria except for elections to the federal president, presidential elections. No, a presidential participation in presidential elections is not obligatory. It's voluntary. It used to be obligatory until a couple of years ago. How about Germany? So those of you who speak, please come a bit closer to the microphone so that you can be heard. How about Germany? Is voting obligatory? No. It's not an obligation, but people with disabilities can go uh, to the polls uh, but it's not, um, ah, you don't always get a notification that you can vote. And as I heard until recently, uh, people with cognitive disabilities didn't get the notification that they can go to the votes. We, it's interesting to hear from Germany. In Germany, there are legal advisors. I think you have a similar institution in Austria and in Germany you have a supporter who takes care of your money, uh, of your health. Uh, then there is someone who looks after your mail. It's either several people or all in one. So far, at elections, someone who I had a legal uh, supporter for all these areas was excluded from the right to vote. And yesterday, the Supreme Court in the Constitutional Court in Germany decided that people with cognitive disabilities also have the right to go to the vote. 
So the new law says they all have the right to vote, but they're only allowed to vote if they understand what this is all about. So that means everyone who wants to vote will be checked if he or she is at all capable of understanding what this is all about. Now, how can, we, how can one check that? I put the same question. The law has only existed since yesterday, but who is going to check and how if someone can understand what the election is about? Lucy? That is discriminating because there may be someone who understands more easily, but someone else who doesn't. Lucy is quite right. This is a form of discrimination because people can only see the disability but not the human being. Someone who needs support, well, needs support. It's not his own fault. But I'm afraid this new law is not terribly good. Now, I'd like to summarize a bit because we have to move on. Now, if you're nervous, then uh, you will appear to be much more disabled. And when the person is completely uh, at ease, he or she will be far less disabled. It's being nervous that makes the difference. Now, in Austria, if someone needs support for everything in life, uh, we have a new law, which is called the Law on the Protection of Adults. Um, the law doesn't allow uh, that uh, having a tutor is mandatory. So if you need it, a tutor in all areas of life, um, you weren't allowed to vote. But since yesterday, there's been the new law which says you have to take a kind of test to prove that you're able to vote. I think this is nonsense because people who uh, decided that, they should rather think about what would happen to them if they had an accident. So let's all go to Germany and explain our solution to them. In Austria, you are allowed to vote, full stop. You don't need to take a test. You have to be above the age of 16. The problem, rather, is that uh, polling stations are not uh, accessible. You must be sure to have your ID with you. There are barriers, but one is allowed to vote. I'm afraid we have to move on. We have such a great example, and I'd like to give people from FSW a chance to present this example, including Monica. People who can't access a polling station can vote uh, by post. So, there is going to be the European elections, elections to the European Parliament. Uh, who are you going to vote for? Do you know? I don't. Well, the electoral campaign is going to start soon. And we have a representative of Capito who is going to explain the Capito app and you can contact her later for questions. I'm Veronika Fröhlich. I come from Capito, which belongs to Atempo. 
Let me briefly present our Capital app. It's an app for your mobile phone that can be downloaded and used free of charge. The Capito app uh, supplies you with information in easy language. There are different stages. You can get information in German. Um, in easy language or in very easy language so that everyone can understand. You can read the texts on your mobile phone, you can take your time and you can switch between different stages or levels of difficulty. Uh, normal language, easy language, very easy language uh, or difficult language. If you want to have more information, you switch over to difficult language. What matters most for us is to provide information for people that can be understood. In the field of political participation, it's extremely important to know what's happening? What are the politicians doing? What are they talking about? This is our goal. We want to provide information and make it understandable, like the news, for example. And you can read not only what the politicians are saying before the elections, but also what they are actually doing after the elections, because very often between one election and the next, you also need to know what's happening. And there are news on this app available in easy language. Where can we meet you if we have questions? We have a stand outside. You can take a folder. My colleagues will help me distribute the folder. So we will be there after the meeting. Well, Iris, I can allow one more question from Iris because otherwise you will miss your turn. So all other questions will have to be put afterwards to Mrs. Fröhlich. We can allow one more question from Iris. How do I know Which level of difficulty is best for me? How do I know what is right for me? Well, you can try it out for yourself. A1 is the very easy language, short sentences, many explanations. And then A2 is a bit more difficult. And then there is B1. Again, a bit more difficult, and then there is the original. But you can switch from one level to the other and try out what is right for you. And then you know which level of language is best for you. I'm afraid I have to pay attention to the time so that our colleagues from FSW can show us what they have prepared. Of course, you need to know what you do. A politician should speak in language that is easy to understand. I have a project from Sweden. Information is available in English, but we will work on that. There is a great project going on in Sweden. Politicians have, have to learn to use easy language. And then, this is a printed paper, because many people who live in institutions don't have access to the internet or don't have mobile phones, so there is also something available in print. Well, so much about information, but political participation is also possible if you are elected.
who of you is an elected representative of a body representing other people's interests? Among our guests, do we perhaps have a works council member? No. The boss of a company, perhaps. Mr. Essel, you had a works council in your company. Occasionally, yes. Well, it's always good to have an elected representative who you, who you can delegate to talk to your boss. And the elected representatives um, make an appointment with the boss and they talk to the boss. So many of you are elected representatives, many of you will be elected representatives. The most important thing is that people with disabilities have a say when decisions are taking, taken that concern their lives. We have a number of experts among us from the uh, Fund for a Social Vienna. In Vienna we have one body that distributes money to workshops, etc. They decide who is going to get what and make sure that those people who need the money also get the money. And they have a group of experts who are now going to present their project. I'd like to ask the colleagues from FSW to come to the front, Andy and Monica. Perhaps uh, you join at the end and the others get their chairs and uh, put them at the front. We have another 20-25 minutes. I hope you can still concentrate, get a glass of water or stand up, move around while we are rearranging the seats. Well, you have a similar thing in Dusseldorf, which is called LVR. And that's for Germany as a whole, LVR. What's important for us to know is Austria is very small. Germany is 10 times as large as Austria. There are 8 million Austrians and 80 million Germans, 10 times as many. In the meantime, we're going to show you a quick movie. Perhaps we could turn the light down. Could we dim the light a bit? A cordial welcome to this meeting of self-representatives. I will be your moderator. We don't want others to decide about us. We want to decide. It's uh, often difficult to make this possible for people. And through the Self-Representative Day, we've brought together uh, spokespersons of workshops and uh, institutions so that they can talk to each other about what's going on in their institutions. It's really about solidarity and about learning from one another and about supporting each other. That's a good motto for the Self-Representative Day. We shouldn't fight against each other. We have to work together because it's only together that we can achieve something. I want to be involved. I want to... Uh, work for the benefit of people with disabilities. Not much has changed, but a bit nevertheless. We're making progress step by step. And it's important for me that I can inform people who then communicate information to others. Exchanging opinions with many people 
And uh, Mr. Bacher, he's been helping us and supporting us. And the stronger the self-representation is, the greater the chance of their interests are being met. I was the moderator this afternoon. In the morning, I was a buddy. I've been a buddy today. And I was able to help people and to find out uh, what they need. There were, I was in group one. There are four working groups. The first talks about support and tutor. The second working group uh, talks about support by people. The third one, support by institutions. And group four is about uh, political issues. I took part in uh, group four. A good supporter will always be in the background and only into Veen when this is absolutely necessary. What was so special about today was that one working group uh, prepared a theatre performance. We wanted to show uh, what positive support is and what negative support is. And we wanted everybody to understand that. Even non-verbal people. What's special about this event is that uh, it focuses on people. It encourages people to express their opinion. And people are heard and taken seriously. What's particularly important for us is that people with disabilities learn to represent their own interests, particularly people with cognitive disabilities. We want these people to have their own way of expressing themselves, to be present. This is the only way to bring about participation and inclusion. Now, the reason why we need self-representatives is because you can help yourself and you can help others. You learn a great deal. For me, it's important to do this because We're not heard enough. And the rights of people with disabilities must be implemented. And society must know that we exist. What I want for the future is that all people, older people, uh, people suffering from dementia, people with disabilities. I want all of them to have the same rights as it says in the Human Rights Convention and the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. Well, that deserves an applause. Super, that was really great. I'm not going to show you any more slides now because the uh, group of experts from the FSW are going to say something themselves. They're very well prepared. Iris would like to say something. Thank you very much for this film. It was wonderful. I was deeply moved when I saw it for the first time. You can watch this film on YouTube. You can watch it again and again. YouTube FSW Self-Representative Day. That was last year's Self-Representative Day from 2018. So I'd like to thank all those who took part in it. Now, who is going to start? Because I will hand over the microphone.
I have to pay attention to the time. We still have 30 minutes. Maria is going to start and you will coordinate the discussion. Marina is here to support you. I hand over to the self-representatives from FSW. I'm a self-representative and I'm at this conference the self -represented, next self-representative day will take place on the 6th of May. Many clients will be present there. It's going to take place in the building of the Austrian Trade Union Federation. Well, we from the group of experts prepare thoroughly for self-representation. Because we need to be able to uh, deliver a good presentation. Well, I love the self-representative day. And we really have to do everything that's possible, and we have to do our best. Thank you. I'm Robert Soxban. I work with the group. I participate in the group. I um, share in their decisions. We have workshop councils in all of our six uh, workshops and we are also going to set up residential councils because we want to work with the workshops and the housing institutions. We want to make it possible for people who live there to have a say in what's going on and we want to encourage our colleagues We have to get stronger. We need courage. Thank you. So courage and strength, that's important. Now my last statement. Oh, we've been fast, haven't we? Now the question is, what do you think we need in order to be able to participate? Well, just ask us. That's an open question. What do you need to be able to participate? Now, we have someone. Well, I was a member of the expert group. It was a great honor and you did an excellent job. What does it take to be able to participate? That was your question. Yes. What does it take? It takes courage, self-confidence. You need to be assertive. You, need, you have to have a goal in mind. And you must not be distracted. This applies to all people, with or without cognitive disabilities. It applies to people uh, with and without any kind of disability. So courage, self-confidence, assertiveness and a clear goal in mind. You must not allow anybody to stop you. Yes, I want to make a point on that. I apologize for coming in again. I think you need information. There has to be a flow of information 
from the management of a residential institution to the inhabitants. And I can see deficiencies there. This flow of information is not always working. And the political programs are never in easy language. That means my conclusion is, or my wish, if I could express one, is that all party programs be translated into easy language, no matter how much it costs, because they are spending millions on advertisements. I agree with Andy. Everything should be available in easy language, even if they don't keep their promises which they are making during electoral campaigns. They're spending so much money on rubbish. So they should support people like Capito, who can make the translations into easy language. Well, I've had a number of requests for the floor. I need the microphone for the interpreters. Well, what we need is sign language interpreters because we need to be able to understand what it is all about. Um, uh, deaf people should be able to do a presentation and sign language interpreters must be available. So it's not just easy language, but also a sign language. A few, I've seen a few hands up. One needs a lot of self-confidence. But I think you have it. It's about all of you, all of us. Iris and myself will um, draw up a summary. I can only support what Lucy said. But, but people are deaf or blind. They shouldn't be forgotten. They too need information. And information has to be provided in the workshops and the daycare centers. When politicians produce something in easy language, it can be disseminated in the workshops. People with disabilities and without disabilities have to talk to each other. And organizations should cooperate. They shouldn't work against one another. And it's extremely important for all organizations to cooperate in Austria. Yes, cooperation is important. I would like to ask Capito. Why is uh, translation into easy language so expensive? the translations from that come from Capito. Why isn't everything translated into easy language? And when this question is asked, people say it's too expensive. Perhaps uh, Mrs. Fröhlich can reply. Now, I try to explain that. I'm not responsible for the prices, but a lot adds up. So the translation has to be made by a person who is qualified to do that. This is not an automatic process. Uh, and uh, the texts which we translate then have to be checked and tested both the target group to make sure that the people the texts are for uh, can be understood. So the text is translated, then checked, tested, 
and perhaps it has to come back to us and we have to revise the text. Now, if the target group is people with cognitive disabilities, they test the translations. Could a compromise be made, for example? It's important for us to understand But if you can't afford it, you can't make use of these texts. Well, there are tech projects in which we at Capito and at Tempo say that this is so important and we reduce the prices because we feel that we must communicate the information. But it's always a question of what, how much a business wants to spend. Of course, there has to be uh, the will on the part of the company. I see so many hands up. Perhaps we can try a bit harder at easy language. Now, it's you first, then uh, someone from Germany. I think you have to focus on three or four points. First, my question is, do I download something just for fun or do I need it? Second, how much does it cost? Is it worthwhile for me? And then I have to include uh, the working time people have put into it to produce something in easy language. Now, I come to you. Now, uh, we are a test group uh, for Capito, but it takes time, as you said. And we don't get texts on a regular basis, which we could test. We have a test group, and we work with Capito. I'm sure we, I know that. Do you get money for that? Do you get money for that? Yes, we get a bit of money. Well, if uh, the money ends up with people who do the work, it's justified. Janine is next. Janine would like to tell you that she doesn't like the term uh, people with disabilities because we're all equal. I don't want to say anything. I don't like the term disability. Um, well, what else should we say? What, what, what other term should we use? Human beings, people with impairments. Yes, people with handicaps or impairments. That's a new discussion which we are starting people with handicaps, um, cognitive disabilities is another difficult term. Of course, we, we could have a separate working group on this topic. In the European Union and also in the UN Convention, the term people with disabilities is used in the context of 
trying to do things that uh, make life better for them. But we will not address individuals as people with disabilities because this hurts. Well, for me, it's no problem to be called a person with disabilities because I know I'm disabled. Well, as you said, it's not something that's meant personally, but in the outside world, someone who doesn't have a disability, doesn't have a handicap, will not see the human being but his or her disability but it should be the other way around you should see the human being and not the disability you shouldn't be reduced to your disability is that what you meant so you should see the human being the man or the woman first but not the disability because it's discriminating people don't feel at ease and they withdraw into themselves. They can't do anything about that. They can't defend themselves. I saw many hands up. Thank you. Thank you. This was a great event. Monica. Well, in my daily work, we have read texts in easy language and a newspaper is produced which is called Weekly Overview and it's also in easy language. Well, people with disabilities are people, like all others, human beings. Be it a, a cognitive disability or any other special need. So, uh, people with disability is felt uh, to be an insult to some, but... The chronically normal ones, Marianne Schulze, if you know her, invented the term. And uh, um, the chronically normal have to ask themselves, what do we need to do to support people who uh, work in a workshop or live in an institution? And we're using the term because it's in the UN Convention. We know it's not a nice term, but we use it, have to use it nevertheless. Um, why is producing texts in easy language so costly. Now in Sweden they are doing a project teaching politicians to use easier language that may reduce the volume of business for Capito but because those who want to tell us something can put it in a way that we can understand. Wouldn't that be great? Politicians in our country should try and do the same. We'll uh, translate the Swedish project to Austria. It's a great project and as I hear, they have partners all over the world because it's such a great example. They have documents explaining how to go to the vote, what do I need to know. So you can learn a lot. And this is what an international conference is for. Sorry that we're all talking English but it's very valuable nevertheless. What else have you got to say? I know you ask yourselves, what do I need when I am a self-representative or when I'm representing the interests of other people? I need to be able to listen to others. Is that true? Silly question. Yes, of course.
when you want to uh, learn what's going on, be it in parliament or elsewhere, you have to be able to listen. And if you don't listen, it won't work. So you must be able to listen to others. Now the elected representatives, Lucy for example, yes, you have to be very sensitive. You have to have empathy. I understand that the term people with disabilities is discriminating uh, but one might one could say intellectually impaired people but the term is used in the UN convention and unfortunately uh, we can't change that But when you are perceived as a human being, seen as a human being, um, you won't care about that. You need self-confidence and you need courage. You have to have courage. You must be able to listen. What else uh, must you be able to do when you are representing others? Monica. You have to find groups which you can join and where you can do good work. You don't want to be alone. Joining groups is important. Another point is even more important, networking. And a representative needs to be able to network and you have to uh, be courageous enough to speak up and say what you want to say. You must not be shy. You must have the courage to speak up, Andy. Well, you have to try and get strong. If you're strong yourself, you can make others strong who live in daycare structures. I'm an empowerment advisor. This is about being strong and about making others strong. And we have to be strong so that we can express our wishes at the political level and make sure that we are heard and that our wishes are fulfilled. The more we mobilize people, the more we build awareness, the more right of participation will we have. Together we are strong. Well, you used a difficult term. Do you know what empowerment means? Superheroes are strong. They are empowered. Now, if I had to draw this, I would draw something like Popeye with big muscles, being strong. And you advise people, you support people so they get stronger, not just more muscles, but also in their heads, in their minds. It starts at school, at kindergarten even, but mainly at school. So time is running and I see many hands up, which is great. We have to conclude on time. Well, when I'm in a group of self-representatives, I have to know a lot. I have to have the courage to speak up. And don't take it personally. You mustn't let others uh, uh, delude you and... Uh, um, do things to you you don't want. I think that was a very good concluding statement, but we have another five minutes. Thank you, Robert. That was excellent. You have to tell the politicians what to do. You have to go to the parliament, uh, 
uh, to the town hall, you have to tell them what people with disabilities need. They, you should, we shouldn't let them decide about us, without us. We shouldn't always invite politicians because we don't want to advertise for them. So we shouldn't invite politicians to all our events. He's right, isn't he? Well, sometimes we shut the door and we say we want to be amongst ourselves. They shouldn't use us uh, as advertisement. Well, when politicians are not invited, we won't reach our goals. That's true as well, although Thomas meant it slightly different. Uh, the colleague, Rainer, and then the colleague from a tempo. I'd like to thank Robert for what he said. We have to work with each other, not against one another. Together we are strong. Together we can achieve a lot if we speak with one voice or with many voices. When you have many voices, it's much better than just one voice. Uh, together we have one voice and we join forces with representatives from other countries, Belgium, the United States or Germany. We went to Chemnitz together with Lucy and Thomas for networking, for exchanges. We want to know what exists in Germany, Sweden, in Switzerland that doesn't exist in Austria. So we have to have a common goal that makes us strong. Networking is important. Networking with Austria, with Germany, exchanging ideas. How can we solve our problems together? We are coming close to the end. I would like to have one concluding round. All those of you who have a pink card, just say their names. I will also come to the colleagues from the Participation Cafe. We'll do that in sign language. I'd like to hear everyone's voice once today. Monica has to leave, so just say your name. I'm Monica and I'm here. You have your own microphone. In Germany, we have citizen initiatives which we ourselves can start. And your name? I'm Jennifer and I'm with you. I'm Bernhard and I'm with you. I'm Christoph and I'm with you. I'm Camilla and I'm with you. Just say your name. This is I'm Shanine and I'm with you. I'm Johannes, I'm with you. I'm Dominic and I'm with you. I'm Herbert, I'm with you. I'm Dominic, I'm with you. I'm Louvi, I'm with you. I'm new, but I'm with you. I'm Pato, 
I'm with you. I'm David and I'm with you. I'm Maria and I'm with you as well. I'm Lucy and I'm always with you. I'm Mifon and I'm with you. I'm Gerhard and I'm with you. I'm Rainer and I'm with you. I'm Eric and I'm with you and I have been with you for a long time. I'm Alfred and I'm with you. I'm Andreas and I'm with you. I'm Marlene and I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm Johan and I'm with you. Iris, would you like to say something? I'm Iris and of course I'm with you. Almost always. I'm Petra and I'm with you. I'm Andreas and I'm always with you and I invite all those who come from Vienna to the self-representative day on the 6th of May. I'm Thomas and I'm almost always with you. I'm Robert and I'm everywhere and I'm with you. I'm Maria and I'm with you. I am with you whenever I can. I'm Walter. I'm with you all the time. I'm Sepp and I'm with you. There was one good question. Will we get minutes of this meeting? I've got your email address. So you will be getting the minutes. All those of you who have already got an invitation from me, please raise your hands. Do I have the right email addresses? Or your supporters have the email addresses? Uh, colleagues from a tempo, can we show you we have your contact data? You can give me your contact data later on. So we're going to meet in the participation cafe and we may be meeting at the self-representative day or in Vienna or perhaps all those of you who don't live in Vienna, in Salzburg or in Lower Austria. And we can now either have uh, an informal meeting after the end of this uh, uh, meeting, or you just walk around and you may want a certificate of participation. If you don't have it uh, yet, just come to me. You may need it. Is there anything I forgot? What did I forget? Yes. Uh, what should we do with our badges? You can keep the badges, both from the Zero Project Conference and those of the UN, because you will needed to leave the building. You don't need to walk through the scanner when going out, when leaving the building, but you will need your card to leave the building and then you can take it home. It's a nice souvenir. I think it's okay if we take it home because it has our picture. 
So, have fun for the rest of the conference, which is still going on. There will be a concluding uh, session with speeches in English. Well, if you need a certificate of participation, please stay in the room. We're going to distribute it. A round of applause for Iris. We prepared for this event for three days. And an applause for the moderator. She was excellent. And for the interpreters. So, have fun and see you later.